This dish was composed over all my knowledge of 10 years of sepia, based on the five tastes of umami, salt, sugar, sour, and bitter. You are going to have to have very deft touches to make this dish. I am so nervous. If he has created this for this semi-final, it's going to be massive. So, are you ready for the world premiere of Martin's dish? Yes. yes. Martin, let's show him the cooking, mate. So today, you will be cooking my Toffee apple. That is not a freaking toffee apple. Everyone knows the best bit about a toffee apple is the toffee, especially when you're a kid. Mm. So I've toffeed the apple. <laughs> I mean, it, 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 it looks like an apple, but obviously what you're saying is it's not an apple. That's right. The apple is just one continuous strip and lacquered with the toffee and then rolled back up. So that is just literally a whole heap of toffee and a big, long lasagna of apple. Correct. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, listen, I can't wait any longer. I don't know about you, but let's taste it. I can't wait. I can't this. The hero on the plate is this apple. And it's so confusing because it looks like an apple, but it's not just a simple apple on the plate. When you cut in half, you can see all the layers. That is so beautiful. Oh, wow. Yeah. Like, it's been spiralised and it's ribbons of apple coated in this beautiful, shiny, glossy toffee and then rolled back up to look like an apple and it still looks like an apple. <laughs> that can was so good. Wow. So pretty. I am motoring through this. My pumpkin and persimmon puree is in the oven. My red toffee caramel is cooling down. Time to make my toffee apple scroll. The apple is one of the main components of this dish, so I have to get it right. I need to get it into that lathe to get it beautifully spiralised. And here we find ourselves with a pressure point. I'm not happy with this first apple. I'm going to do it again. Damn it. Start again. I laid my second apple and cracks again. Now, Amelia, here's yeah. one of the pressure points. <laughs> happy? Not yet. OK. Couple of cracks. Couple of cracks. Yep. Not major. Yeah, OK, cool. Do you want to have another crack while we're here? <laughs> no. You want to go Maybe on? I'll do it. You just face the fridges no, and then come back. That's not how it works. <laughs> this could save you. Yeah, this is exactly right. Okay. So not too far on this end is where I'm guess guessing it's cracking, because they're the yep. marks. That looks good. Good luck. Thank you. Good luck. This apple is the hero of the dish, and it is so important to make sure that the thinness of the apple is perfect, otherwise you won't get that perfect apple shape. Good. My third apple looks really good because it's just smooth all the way through. Pushing the start end of the machine only halfway. What does that even mean? Martin's apple was the most perfect apple. Like, you could be deceived. It's actually, like, just a whole apple on the plate. Why won't my apple move? I'm meant to be getting this beautiful, long, thin ribbon of apple. It's not happening. This is so ridiculous. I just cannot get this apple to spin. Laura's having trouble. I think she's struggling to make the lathe work. I'm starting to feel the stress creep up. Why is this not working? I honestly cannot hear anything other than my head thumping. 
My eyes watering. Oh, things don't stop. I feel like the lights have just gotten darker. If I'm gonna get to the finale. I need to have that apple on the plate. And right now, I do not have an apple. If I can't get the apple, which is the most important part of this dish, then what's the point of moving on with this cook? Just deep breaths, deep breaths, okay? Now, go fast, fast. No, no, okay, but look, you've broken the bottom. Yeah, the, the, look how many holes yeah. I've gone through. It's okay. You right, Lozzie? Here, get another apple. Go through this side, go through that side, on the thick end, okay? Is yours cracking? Yeah. Just push it in far. You need to push it in, like, three mil from the base of the lathe. Enough to hold it, Laura. Because otherwise it won't spin. Enough. No, 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 more like three mil. Push it more. More, 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 more. more. That's as far as yep. it's going to go. Good. Good. Now, fast. Thank you. You're the best. You got it, Lozzie. Thanks, Mills. No worries, Loz. Thank you. I honestly cannot believe that we are all fighting for a spot in a finale. And the two most selfless people I know have come over and stopped what they're doing. That honestly could ruin their cooks to help me succeed. Like, this would never happen anywhere else. Honestly, I've never struggled so much in my life with an apple before. Um, that was really, really hard and very frustrating, but I'm lucky Mills and Reynolds helped. How are you, Lost Dog? Yeah, so much better, thank you. I just feel so honoured to be cooking with Amelia and Reynolds right now but I need to pick myself up and get this apple done and fight my way back and get up to speed. It's time to check my apple scroll. <sighs> Looking at my apple scroll, it's just falling flat. What the hell is going on? It doesn't look like an apple. I don't feel pretty good right now. If it's not like Martin Ben's apple, it could be me that's going home. I'm a little bit panicked now because I'm not sure what to do. Okay, apple. Perfect. Stunning. 40, 20 minutes uncovered. Looks good. So pretty. I'm really happy. With, I think it's really beautiful. Let's go. Let's go. Let's move, move, move. My apple scroll is not right. It's fallen flat. Remove top half the silicon mold. I've done something wrong. The tipping is kind of collapsed a little bit, and it doesn't have that perfect apple shape. This is so hard. I'm thinking maybe the mistake that I've done is rolling it out super tight and it didn't fill up the mold. I have so much left to do. So I can't do this process again because I don't have time. I've just got to go with it. So I'm going to follow as per the recipe and get it back in the oven. Hopefully I can shape it on later to make it look like Martin Ben's. This apple, it could be the difference of making it to the finale or not. Reynold, how come you've, you've still got leaves in there? No, those leaves are the, they're dehydrating. They're dehydrating? Oh my God, that's not a good idea, is it? I think I made a big mistake. The leaves have lost the shape and the imprints. Uh, I was stupid enough to leave the um, leaves in the oven a bit too long. So what happens is it starts to set. If I don't fix these leaves, I'm probably not going to be in the grand finale. Make sure they've got nice uh, stamp. You don't want to lose that. 
So while the pumpkin and persimmon leaves are still hot, I need to reprint and reshape them. I really wish that I didn't put all of my pumpkin and persimmon leaves into the oven. I wish I just had some extras out. Ah, uh, I think they are looking okay. I just hope that I haven't ruined them. Keep working here, Reynold. Keep going, mate. I have so much left to do. I need to make the miso toffee sauce. I've got to whip my chantilly cream, dice my raspberry and apple jelly, and make my chocolate stem. It's like, I need to speed up. Guys, this is the most important 30 minutes of this season. 30 minutes to go, come on! Come on! Oh no! It's all right. <laughs> this is my spare. <laughs> oh, don't do this to me, Reynolds. Seriously. <laughs> uh. Leave apple and set aside. Cool. Let's pull that apple out. I get my apple scroll out of the oven. It's finished cooking. It is looking beautiful. It looks just like Martin's. And I'm so happy that this one hero component has worked. Pretty, pretty. Yeah, this like looks so beautiful. It looks stunning. It's just got to drain through now. I'll just keep brushing it with caramel. I get my apple out of the oven. It still hasn't formed the right shape. I mean, this one I'm going to go for because it's the bigger one. So the only thing I can think of is to add some more red toffee caramel to make it round up. Just need to make this nicely shaped. What the hell? I know it's wrong, but I can't really fix it. I could be done. but I need to keep going, keep trying, keep fighting on. I can do this. I can do this pressure test. This dessert is so labour intensive and I haven't done anything like this before. I have to keep pushing till the end. To make my chocolate stem, I get my trimaline and isomalt on the heap. While that's happening, I grab my jelly and I'm going to dice it up. I'm dicing up my little jelly into the perfect little cubes and I look up. Come on. My caramel has burnt. This is an absolute disaster. But I can't let myself be derailed by a chocolate caramel stem. So I quickly ditch it, I get a fresh pot out and get that trimaline and ice malt on again. I'm here to be in the finale. I don't want to settle for anything less. We have 10 seconds to go! been the most technical dessert I've ever made. That really pushed me creatively. The leaves were really tough. I am just so proud of myself that I was able to do it. Creating food like this, it's just incredible. I honestly cannot believe I finished that. I thought spiralising an apple would be my downfall. You know, there's so much on the line today, like two of us are going through to the finale and one person will go home. Yeah, it's going to be really, really tough. Today, if I don't get to the grand finale, this is my this is the end of the journey for me. Uh, it 
would suck because I did come into this competition to start with believing that I can win that trophy. But this pressure test is a make or break moment. So it's all going to come down to that apple. Hey, Reynolds. Well, Reynolds. Hello, Reynolds. I'm shaking. I feel the nerves. All right, mate, your five minutes starts now. I'm worried about the shape. So I'm glazing the apple with more toffee to make sure it's the right color and to give that beautiful, nice shine to it. I feel like I am so close to the last stretch of this competition. That's two minutes down, three minutes to go, Reynolds. MasterChef is all about being able to push yourself and kind of not give up. That's one of the biggest key ingredients to win MasterChef is to never give up. This is my moment to show the judges that I'm worthy for a finale. 60 seconds, Reynolds. I grab my chocolate stem, trying to brush it with the cocoa. and it breaks. I can't believe I'm just shaking so much during this plate up. This is not like me. This is actually so much pressure. 10 seconds. I get another one. And in the last seconds, I get the stem into the apple. You good? Yeah, I'm all good. All right, bring it over, mate. Oh man, you killed me over here. I think I held my breath the entire five minutes. <laughs> Reynolds, keeping the pressure going right to the very last second. Yeah. I cooked something savory in round one. I really want to put up a sweet dish in round two. I'm just doing like a little take on strawberries and cream. I'm basing it on strawberries and ricotta. So I'll do like a little sweetened whipped ricotta. I'm using the whey to make a really nice granita. Oh mix of strawberry sorbet, and then have like some different textures of strawberry. I love making ricotta. I love using ricotta in desserts because it adds such a nice creamy but savoury element to a dessert. OK, talk to me about how you feel about this dish getting you into the semi-final. Is it yeah. enough? Yes. When you look across at Callum over there, who's just pounding flavour into everything, is strawberries and cream enough on a day like today to get you into the semi-final? Yes. Yeah? Yeah. I know that the judges are expecting a lot from both of us today. You know, this is top four going into semi-final. They want incredible food. Strawberries and cream is definitely, I think, a simple choice. I might be playing it safe, but it's a dish that I've been wanting to do for a while, and I think this is the right time to pull it out. Oh, nice, Laura. About 30 minutes to go and I check on my ricotta. The curds have formed, so I just strain it off into a muslin to get all the liquid out of it. Are you keeping the whey? Yeah, I'm gonna make a granita with it. Oh. Today could be the last day that I'm in this kitchen and it's so heartbreaking. Like, I'm trying to give this competition my everything and it's a really nerve-wracking thought to think that I actually could be going home today. My sorbet's on. My granita is in the freezer. Just whipping my ricotta now to get it like super creamy. Whip ricotta, it's really gonna be that cream element to the strawberries and cream dessert. And there's way more sugar. Such a simple element, but it's also so important on this dish. It's just a bit too tart right now for my liking. So I just wanna make sure it's perfect. The flavour is there, but the texture is wrong. Plus, It's grainy. It's grainy? Yeah. I've whipped ricotta so many times. I've made ricotta so many times before. I just don't understand what has gone wrong. Are you sure it's not sugar grains? No, it's not sugar grains. This has never happened to me before. 
There is so much at stake today, and if this grainy ricotta goes onto the plate, I know I'm basically sending myself home. I don't have time to make any more ricotta. I feel like a deer in the headlights right now. I honestly do not know what to do. Um, I feel like I've ended my dream of, of winning this competition. And it's so heartbreaking. What can you do to fix it? Can you strain it or make a different cream? Um, I don't know if I, like, I can keep blitzing it. If that's just going to kill it. Try to fix this. I've got a really small amount of ricotta that's been blending in a massive food processor, which I think is probably not helping. So I put it into a smaller container, yep. blitz and blitz and blitz. It's such a simple element, but it's also so important on this dish. And if it's not there, the balance of this dessert is completely thrown out and it's basically just a strawberry sorbet. What do you think, Moz? Thank you very much, Laura. Thank you. It looks like a Laura special, doesn't it? You can see all of the different textures. It's simple, but it's just done well, very well. It starts with that sorbet, which has got a good old whack of strawberry flavor. And then the whipped ricotta really start to come into play and coat your palate. That granita doesn't have like a huge overarching flavor around it, but for me, it's more the temperature. It's technically perfect. And she's just nailed every element. My mouth is still zinging with brightness and freshness. You have these different textures of strawberry, you know, the macerated, which is nice and sweet, the fresh, which is a little bit more tart. And that sorbet, I mean, it was a gorgeous sorbet. And what I loved about the ricotta was not so much the sweetness, but that lemony kind of brightness. The devil really is in the details. And in a dish this simple, I think she's really perfected uh, the idea of strawberries and cream. For me, there was, there was ricotta on that table. She could have just taken the ricotta and whipped it, added her lemon and orange zest, and away you go. But she chose to make it. And then the byproduct, which was the way to then make the granita out of that, balance it nicely, was very clever. It ate absolutely beautifully. It might be a safe idea, you know, but the execution for me was very well done. I feel like I'm really behind and I'm rushing everything. The assassin put a print juice and cream into the ice cream. And I've just realised that I've made a huge mistake. Oh. I need to add that prune cooking liquid to flavour my ice cream. Oh. oh. But I haven't taken the prune juice out to cool down. And I don't have time for it to cool down. I've got to just add this cooking liquid into the ice cream mix. It's probably going to affect it now, I reckon. And it's separated. That's not good. It's lumpy. It's not combining. Oh, my gosh. This is a complete disaster. I don't know. I think I have to stir it through. So I'm whisking away, and it looks like it's still not working. I'm just going to let this ice cream churn, and hopefully it'll get rid of all the lumps. I've got to get on to making my chocolate ganache right now. Come on. She probably feels so much pressure because she's a dessert person. But at the moment, I've got two things that are really worrying me. 
my ice cream could be lumpy, and my white coral might have all the air knocked out of it. And that really, really worries me. Come on, Larry, come on! Come on, Larry, come on, keep the pace. Push too, honey. <laughs> amazing. Looks like the girls are catching up. Well done. And it's the last 20 minutes. And by the looks of it, all four of them are going to get everything done in time. At this stage of the competition, they're all strong. So it can come down a one tiny little mistake to send someone home. Good job, team. Really good pace. I'm on to my final element now, which is the Oloroso whip. So. For the caramel, I heat some sugar and water to 195 degrees. Yeah, all good. I got that set. Great work, Timmy. Once that's nice and golden, I get it off the heat and add some cream and Oloroso sherry. My caramel's looking great. I have a little taste and, yeah, it's delicious. Beautiful colour on that, Tim. Thanks. Let's go, Tim. Come on. I'm starting to get all my elements together and I'm confident that I might actually be able to put up Peter Gilmore's white coral. Beautiful, Simon. Right, listen up. You've got 15 minutes to go. Come on, let's go. Come on. Let's go. My caramel mixture is ready to go. So I add 140 grams of the brulee, 100 grams of the double cream, yes. and whisk that up to make the Oloroso whip. Beautiful. Let's go, Tim. Come on, mate. Get those muscles. Oh, whisk it. Oh, it's ridiculous. Tim, how's your arms, mate? Oh, it's hard. <laughs> Come on, mate. This isn't a team challenge. Let's go, guys. Come on. Soft peaks. Looking behind, Simon's whisking away too, and we're feeling each other's pain, I think. And then careful with that whisk, oh. Tim. Oh, it's starting to split now. I don't know what, it, what I've done. Everything's been going so well in this cook, and then in this last element, it's split on me. Yeah. This is not what I want right now. It's happened, man. Oh, my old solo whip just split on me. What happened was that was it not cold enough when you started whisking it? Oh, I, I thought it I thought it was cold enough, but maybe not. All right. So I'm just going to heat it back up again, try and bring it back together, and try again. Right, you know that it's got a, eggs in it and cream. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'll be really interested to see if this actually works for you. Keep pushing, Tim. Keep pushing, All right, go, mate. Go, go, go. Um, or whip. Come on. Right, right. Come on, come on. Let's go. 200 grams of the caramel. Peter's got me doubting now, so I'm not taking any chances. I'm not going to try and risk bringing my whip back together. I need to start again. Yeah, that's good, Tim. Come on, mate. Lucky I've been going really, really fast. So I've got a little bit of time on my sleeve, and I think I can get it done. Guys, you've got 10 minutes to go. Yeah. Don't lose the intensity. Come on, guys. Go, Simon! Keep it going, keep it going. Keep going. Behind. You look like you're right where everybody else is, babe. Larissa has done amazing things to catch up, and she's come so far. Tessa, you're smashing it now. On fire, come on. Tessa's kept going and pushing through. Simon, be careful it doesn't split, babe. And we feel like everybody's at the same place. They're all just whipping and whipping and whipping, and it's crazy. Timmy, be careful. Don't do it. Don't again. go too far. This is the last shot they've got to get into that finale. And you can really see it. It's written all over their faces. So did you redo the caramel? Yeah, this is my this is my new one. OK, was it really cold when you started whisking? Um, yeah, I've got it in the ice bath. Is the mix cold? Yes. Yeah. Be careful. I just need to just caress it and not try and whip it too fast. I've got... If this doesn't work, I won't have time to make another one. Or I've got nothing left to make another one. Let's go, Tim. Woo! 
Come on, Sam. Guys, you've got four minutes. Let's go. Let's go, Come go. On. Four minutes. Make sure you've got everything ready. Check your list. This cook has been so crazy. I've never felt so rushed in my life. But I'm really happy with my Oloroso whip, so I'm going to put that straight into the fridge for service. Yay. Well done, babe. Good one, Larry. Nice hustle, Larry. Now I've got to make sure that I've got all the other elements ready for service. I've been really worried about this ice cream mixture. I'm really hoping that the texture is smooth and thick. Larry. Yes. Yes. Larry, that ice cream is looking beautiful. Keep going. But surprisingly, it looks actually okay to me. And I'm so relieved. That's it, Larry. When I open this container, I'm just hoping that the white coral will hold its shape. It does. <laughs> I'm so happy with my white coral, and it already looks like coral to me. Larissa, you have 10 minutes to go. It's interesting. I don't know if it's more like a minute for that flight. No, it's just a little bit of air in there, which is good. I'm feeling the coral and it's really light and fluffy. I'm pretty happy with it and I'm getting that really cool coral shape. You've got seven minutes to go. I'm really happy with my elements. The prune jam, it's a good consistency. The chocolate ganache is smooth and beautiful. And my Oloroso whip is nicely whipped. Three and a half minutes. And surprisingly, my prune ice cream has actually worked out. 90 seconds. I finished putting up my dish, and it looks like a beautiful dessert. And I can't believe it. I'm just so, so proud of myself. Larissa, brilliant stuff. Well taste. Well Enjoy. Nice. Thank you. It looks good. Like, it looks airy. There okay. you go. All right, let's taste. Look, generally, I think the corals look quite good. I mean, they're really nicely shaped, quite organic looking. Maybe a little dense to, to get through. Yeah. But, gee, good effort. Yeah, really good. But, geez, I really love the ice cream for some reason. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the ice cream is very good. Overall, it's delicious. So, I'm going to make just some um, sheet ravioli, a bisque, and serve the uh, lobster in a medallion. Just poached, I think. I'm really positive about the dish that I can create, but this is Marco P. White who's going to be judging me. It's the ultimate of intimidating environments. I need to keep the adrenaline pumping me towards positive, not um, unravel me, and just flavour and food first. In all honesty, I'm absolutely packing it right now. I'm doing a tomato lobster bisque uh, with a lobster medallion and a coriander ravioli. I've poached my lobster, I've got my bisque half done. But all I can feel is Marco's presence just prowling around the benches. Hello, how are you? I just can't concentrate and I'm falling behind. Every time I see him, I just feel this panic rising within me and I, I just forget about what I'm doing. So intimidating. Tracy, yes. what are you going to make for this? Um, I'm just going very simple and um, to, um, oh, going to poach the. Um... Oh, I can have to speak. <laughs> Sorry, I'm very irritated. Breathe. I can't breathe. I don't even know if I know how to cook anymore. And I'm trying to calm myself from crying because I, you know, I don't want to cry in front of him. What, why are you intimidated? He's a, he's a lovely bear of a man. He's lovely. He's lovely. It smells delicious. It does. Tracy, I've been in your position so many times in my life. Especially when I was younger. Good luck. Thank you. 
Marco's words are really kind and they've kind of just melted my fears away and uh, I just hope I haven't wasted too much time panicking now. I'm plating up. I've got the lobster tail in its shell and it is not cooking quick enough. I take the, the medallion out of the shell and it is still so raw in the middle. One minute to go. Come on. I just throw this medallion into the pan, but I don't think I've got enough time at all. I think I'm going to have raw lobster. Hello, Tracy. Hello. How are you feeling? Very overwhelmed. <laughs> it's a lobster broth with a coriander ravioli and a lobster medallion. Before you taste, I fear that my lobster is undercooked. Thank you for your honesty. Right, let's cut this lobster, shall we? I just really want to hold this together, but now's a moment of truth. My heart is sinking to see this raw lobster being cut. It looks, it looks, it looks perfect to me. To me. <laughs> Why are you apologising? You know what, I reckon so far, that's the best bit of lobster we've seen in terms it's of... It's good, yeah, it's cooking. perfect. Really that is good. really perfect. Really good. For your smile to your tears. Your lobster is perfect without question. I like your bisque. It's got real flavour. I like the tomatoes as well. It just softens it. What this dish tells me about you as a person is you like to create flavours. You're very giving. It shows with what you serve on your plate. Thank you. Thank you. I am so relieved. I've been so intimidated about having Marco in the kitchen, but maybe it just helped me to push on. Such an amazing, amazing cook. Pull back the flank. Run the knife down the ribs. That's it, Billy. Billy is on fire. She's ahead of the two boys and keeping up with Marco, which is amazing. Matthew, go, go, go. I'm really struggling to butcher this lamb chop. Two bones. It's a double lamb chop. I'm trying to be precise to make sure that I don't make a mistake, and balancing up that precision and the speed is, is really difficult. Two bones, remove one. This is crucial, this bit, right? So make sure you're watching what he's doing. Looking at Marco's, he has the meat from two chops, but only one bone. Looking at Matthews, he's cut his double chop straight down the middle into two single chops. And I don't even think he's realised his mistake. This isn't a good start. French shrimp. Clean your bone. Look at that. Marco's butchery skills are out of this world. I've never seen anything like it. Clean. Lee, can you keep up? Marco is the master. It is mind-blowing how fast he is, and I am so glad I'm not down there having to keep up with him. Come on, quick up. Found the double chop, and I'm gonna remove the bone. Starting to second-guess myself, because I'm not confident with this. I think I've got the right cut. Oh, God, no. Oh, no. The bone on Reynolds' chop looks a lot longer than Marco's. Um, I think that maybe he's taken it from the wrong end of the rack. Are you watching? Trent. Out. Guys, are you watching him? Have a look at his finished chop. Oh, double cover. I realised I've only got one single chop and I needed to have a double fillet with one bone in it. Massive trouble already. My chop's not thick enough. I'll need to start again. Have you done that? On a small tray in the fridge, yes? Yes, Marco. Matthew, yes, Marco. Reynolds, yes, Marco. Billy. Yes, Marco. Are you done? Not yet, Marco. I really don't know if Billy has time to start again. You've got to keep up with Marco. He's moving really, really quickly. Billy. Yes, Marco. Push harder. If she falls behind, it'll just be a huge mess. Next step, we're going to make the chicken canal, the chicken mousseline, yes? Yes, Marco. Keep up. Let's go. Go, Matthew. Go, 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 go. Let's your chicken. Come on. Marco looks like he's just cruising through it, but he's working so fast. For the chicken mousse. In with an egg. 
in with the salt and then blitz. Billy, keep up. Come on, Billy. Yes, Marco. This challenge is all about precision, so I have to get this lamb chop right, but I'm worried I've made a huge mistake starting again. Come on, Billy. Marco's already three or four steps ahead of me on the chicken mousse. I'm in serious trouble. How's it going, Billy? Done? Yes? Not yet, Marco. Right. For the chicken mousse, we add the cream. Approx 250 mils. I'm making a chicken mousse and I, I don't know where this goes in the dish. I've made a, a mousse like this before and, and you know, put it inside tortellini or, or cooked it as a mousseline. So I, I think that the consistency that I've got here is fine, but I don't know how Marco is going to get us to use this. When you've done that, place it in your fridge. Come on, Billy. I'm finally happy with my double lamb chop, but I have to race to catch up with Marco on this chicken mousse. I'm really worried about Billy. Marco's moving really, really quickly. Your mousse should be made. At this stage, I'm thinking it will be an absolute miracle for her to pull through today. Now we need tongue, ham, truffle. For the brumoise, for the lamb chops. And let's dice the tongue, not too small and not too large. Yes, Marco. Yes, yes Marco. Marco. This is pickle tongue. It's already prepared. This is a three Michelin star dish. That means everything has to be perfect, right down to how finely I cut this tongue and ham. I'm watching you, Reynolds. Yes, Marco. Are you watching me? Yep. Is it fine enough, Reynolds? Yes, Marco. Good. Come on, Billy, you need to move on. Come on, quicker. Yes, Marco. Come on. Reynolds, you on the ham? Yeah, all right now. That's it, Billy. How are you doing, Matthew? I'm oh, just finishing the tongue now, moving on to the ham, Marco. Move on to the ham, move on to the ham. You've got enough tongue there. Marco's moved on to dicing the ham, and I've just got to keep pushing myself. I'm trying to watch what Marco's doing. He's cutting them up nice and finely, so I just try and do the same thing. Come on, Billy. Right, then the truffle. A third to half of your truffle. Yes? Yes, Marco. Yes, Marco. Yes, Marco. Chop your truffles. Go on the truffle, mate. Come on, let's go. You onto your truffles, Matthew? Yes, Marco. Good. The really big difficulty of this challenge is the uncertainty. We haven't even seen the final dish, and as I'm preparing each element, I don't know where it's going to be used or how much of it I'm even going to need. How's it going, Billy? You're happy with it? Uh, it's a little bit big, Marco. I think I need to go smaller. If it's a little too large, then just chop it through a bit. Yep. Easy, isn't it? No, Marco. Oh, it is. <laughs> I feel like I've made up time, but... I don't want to fall any further behind today, so I'm racing through this tongue, ham and truffle dice. Get it nice and fine, Billy. If you have a, the smallest of holes in the crepinette, it will burst during cooking. I'm going really slowly because I don't want this crepinette to burst. The lamb is the hero of the dish, so it has to be perfect. Matthew still hasn't realised he only has a single chop. If he wraps his single cutlet in the crepinette, it'll be way too late to go back and butcher another one. So have you all done now? Yes, you're all ready? Yes, Marco. Yes, Marco. Marco. Tidy up, get your steamers. Keep up, let's go. Show me your cutlets. Yes, Marco. Show me your cutlets. That's not a double cutlet. That's a single cutlet. So you're in trouble. I'm really worried. I can't believe I've messed up the lamp. It's the key component to this whole dish. This mistake, it could send me to elimination. But we're so far into this cook that if I turn back now, I know I won't get anything onto the plate. I've just got to push on and hope that my flavours match Marco's and that's enough to save me. That's a big bone from the neck end, not the saddle end. I've stuffed it, but this is more than just a bone. I'm going to focus and make sure that everything else on the plate is going to be absolutely perfect. It looks like it just might burst open. 
A burst crepinette at this stage would be a complete disaster. The only thing I can think of is to wet the edges of the coal fat and try and stick it together. Hopefully that's enough. Then get the baguette leeks. The slightly larger ones, Matthew, Reynolds, Billy. Yes, Marco. Yes, Marco. Exactly the same principle. Watch, watch what Marco's watch doing him. now. This is really crucial. Split them down the middle, halfway down, because we've got to get the grit out. Yes, Marco. Yes, Marco. Good. Wash your leeks. Yes, Marco. Yes, Marco. Take your baguette leeks and dice them. Yes. Yes, yes Marco. Marco. See, the reason why you have to answer me is because then I know th that you've taken instruction. If you don't answer me, I'll keep on asking you the same question. Yes. Yes, yes Marco. Marco. Reynolds, come on. Precision and speed are key today, and I just can't get the both of them happening together. I've been so precise with the leaks that I've fallen behind Marco. I still need to give them a quick wash because leaving dirt in the stalk is a big no-no. Come on, boys, let's go. Move. Well done, Billy, well done. Then we take the mushrooms, we scrape them, we wipe them. Where's your mushrooms? I can't see them. Marco says that we need to grab the cordyceps mushrooms. It looks like a mouldy piece of asparagus. Let's go, Matthew. Go, 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 go. Reynold, come on. So when you scraped it and wiped it, that's what it should look like. OK. I can't believe how fast Marco is. He's already trimmed and cleaned his mushrooms, and I haven't even started mine yet. I have to get a move on. Then cut your mushroom into quarter lengthways. Cut your mushroom quarter into yes, length Marco. Yes, yes, Marco. Thank you. Nice work, Matthew. You're in the lead. You're the only one really keeping up. You only need one mushroom cut lengthways into four. Yes, Marco. Yes, Marco. Good. So for your asparagus. Come on, Reynold, you're falling behind. You need to push it. Because remember, if you lose a step, you're in big trouble. A little bit of water, a little bit of lemon juice. A bit of salt, a bit of olive oil. Yes, Marco. Yes, Marco. So, Billy, keep up. Go on, you need your pot, you need some water, you need asparagus on the heat. Get the lamb chop. Get the lamb chop. You need that to go in at the same time. The lamb chop into the semi. The next step is to steam the lamb chop. I'm a little bit worried because I know that I don't have a double lamb chop like he does, so I can't work to the same timings as him on this. Um, this is going to make it hard. He's got his chop in the steamer, guys. Come on, Reynolds. Reynolds, are you watching me or Matthew? Watching you, Marco. Can't hide from Marco. He's got an eagle eye on everything. Reynolds, that thing should be on the gas. Come on, get it on the gas. You put your olive oil in, put uh, salt in. Not yet. Is there water in there, Reynolds? No. This is multitasking to another level, having to have one eye on him, one eye on what you're doing, one ear to Marco and one ear to the gantry. Come, Reynold, you need to get that pan put some water in it. It's just insanely tough. Reynold, he's speeding up and you're not. When you've got a spare moment, wipe down. Oh. Just take your time, take your time, mate. I'm panicking at the moment. I, mean, I look over at Billy, I look over at Matt. I feel really lost. Come on, Reynold. Quickly. I'm really worried about Reynolds. His meat should have been in the steamer ages ago. I have no idea where his head is. Reynolds? Reynolds, yes. you Reynolds, you're chopped. Needs to be in the steamer. Needs to be in the steamer. He is letting the pressure get to him, and that is a one-way ticket to elimination. Make sure your steamer doesn't boil dry. I want to stay safe today, so I need to focus on Marco. I'm watching you, Reynolds. Yes, Marco. Are you watching me? Yep. Next step, chop the truffle. Finely chopped. It's just for the garnish at the end, yes? Yes, Marco. Yes, Marco. Yes, Marco. I used all my truffle before. I realised that I've cut up all of my truffle already to use as part of the chicken mousse. Matthew. Yes, Marco. Have you run out of truffle? Yes, Marco. That wasn't very clever of you, was it? Not particularly, Marco. I'm really worried now because if I don't have truffle to go in there, um, then my sauce isn't going to taste the same as Marco's. You know, I've already got a mistake with the lamb. I I I'm in real trouble. Get more truffle. Matthew! Yes, Marco. Come on. Thankfully, I've got some of this truffle left, but it's mixed in with the tongue and the ham. I think if I can pick some of it out, I might be able to save this sauce. My biggest concern is this is going to cost me time, and, and Marco's rushing ahead. 
Come on, dress, 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 dress. Come on. I've almost finished plating, but the butter from my leeks has leached out and it's ruining the presentation. I need to plate up again. What are you doing? What's Matt doing? Starting again is going to cost me time. Oh, God, no. Oh, no. But if I plate it up the way that it is, then I'm definitely in the bottom two. Add your mushrooms. You bet, Marco's almost finished. He's going to finish in a second. You need to get it done. You have to get everything on the plate, get all the elements. Yes, 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 yes. I can't believe Matthew's replating. It is a huge risk. Add your truffle and a little bit of your juice. The challenge ends when Marco finishes plating, and it looks like he is seconds away. Matthew could end up with nothing on his plate. Come on. Come, Matthew. Get it on the plate. Come, Matthew. Get it on the plate. Finish with parsley. Come on, Billy. Keep pushing, guys. Keep going, Come Matthew. on. Come on, you can do it. As fast as you can, Matthew. Just get it on the plate. Matthew, Reynolds, Billy. Come on. Come on. Vegetables around, Matthew. Vegetables around, good mate, that's it. And then grab that sauce. Tip the sauce Mushrooms. on. Mushrooms. Tip the sauce on. I finished, come on. Go, Matt, go, 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 go. Sauce. Matthew, come on, buddy. Sauce. Dress come it, on, dress it, dress it, dress it, dress it. Ten, nine, eight, eight seven, seven six, six, five, four, four on, Matthew. three, two, two one. one. That's it. Beautiful. Step away. <laughs> How did you find that? Ah, uh, thrilling. Mild sense of panic all the way through? Yeah, yeah, yeah that feeling of being behind. I hate that feeling. Well, there's a lot riding on it. Yeah. yeah. A lot riding on this dish. Yeah. Are you happy with it? I am happy with it. What do you reckon in terms of the look of the plate? No, I think you've done well. Very pretty. Oh. What do you reckon? Little bit. Over. <sighs> Still That's pink, right. but it's just a little, <laughs> little bit, bit more than yeah. St. Marco's. I think you've done a really good job, and it's a nice thickness. And if there's one failing, when you put it into the pan, the pan was too hot. Okay. So what it's done is it's scorched it. Yeah. It's caramelised too much. Okay. But you know something? I think you should be really pleased with yourself. Thanks. You know what? I think you've done a great job. What I love most is how truffly and well balanced that sauce is. Really beautiful. Well Thanks. done. Billy. Well done. <laughs> Brilliant job, huh? Thanks. You can count this as something that uh, is truly special, actually, cooking yeah. along with Marco and putting up a dish that pretty much replicated what he did. So, well done. Yeah, thanks.